Good afternoon. The first item of business this afternoon is Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body Question Time. If a member wishes to uh, request a supplementary question, they should press the Request to Speak button during the relevant question or indicate so in the chat function by entering the letters RTS. As ever, I would make a plea for succinct questions and answers to match. I call question number one, Paul Sweeney. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Car Parliamentary Corporate Body whether it will reject the annual survey of hours and earnings and weekly earnings average of 4.2% for uprating the staff cost provision in the financial year 2023 to 2024. Jackson Carlow. Can I thank Mr Sweeney for his question? The corporate body is responsible for funding the members' expenses scheme and for determining which indices are used to uprate the overall provisions, which include the staff cost provision. Individual MSPs as employers determine any salary increase for their staff within the overall uh, staff cost provision. As part of the annual budgeting cycle, the corporate body considers the indexation for uprating of all provisions, including staff cost provision. Whilst the basket, ASH, that's the annual survey of hours and earnings, and AWE, the average weekly earnings, uh, indices have been adopted in recent years as a steadier basis for any increase, this is a matter for SPCB judgment rather than automatic application, as we thoroughly consider all factors for the financial year for 2023-24. Now, the, the, the corporate body will submit its budget for 2023-24 for consideration at the Finance and Public Administration Committee on the 10th of January. And a bit like the Chancellor, I may know, but I'm not able to say what our deliberations might be concluding. But we will be determining all the indices for all provisions in the coming weeks. Paul Sweeney. Um, thank you, Deputy President Officer, and thank Mr Carlaw for his response. I'm sure the bond markets will be listening in to whatever decisions are arrived at eventually. But I think we can all agree that MSPs' offices do make a tangible difference to constituents. They provide a vital public service. And I think that all members do strive to provide a decent financial settlement in terms of pay for staff, but that frontier does need to increase in line with cost of living. So given we are faced with that unprecedented cost of living crisis, will the SPCB meet with GMB's Scottish Parliament staff branch as a matter of urgency to discuss their pay proposal in good faith and to agree an appropriate award for members' staff? Jackson Carlow. Uh, presiding officer, this also touches on the subject matter of the question from Pam duncan Gladsey. But no, I have to say the SBCB will not meet with the trade unions because that is not competent for us to do so. We are not the employer of MSPs staff. MSPs themselves are the employers. Our responsibility is to set the framework within which salary uh, increases can be agreed, but it is for individual members, either together or in concert with colleagues, to agree what that level of increase will be. Question number two, Miles Briggs. Thank you, Deputy President Officer. To ask the Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body what discussions have taken place in consider, to consider providing cross-party groups with access to broadcasting services in committee rooms. Clear Baker. Um, I thank Miles Briggs for the question. He's asking us about broadcasting services for CPGs. The Code of Conduct does specify that broadcasting facilities cannot be used for cross-party groups, so that does limit our discussions. However, the corporate body does recognise some of the benefits that have come from CPGs who are meeting virtually. Um, the updated hybrid equipment is available for any meetings. Up to 20 rooms in Parliament are facilitated for this, and it can be operated without the broadcasting team. Um, they are happy to demonstrate the use of the facilities that self-operated and there's planned drop-in sessions next month. Miles Briggs. Can I, can I thank uh, Ms Baker for that uh, response um, and also chair, declare an interest as co-chair of both the cancer and chronic pain CPGs. Now, both these CPGs have a high number of people who are incredibly ill or disabled who would like to attend. And as we've moved back into in-person meetings, we've seen numbers reduce. So I, could I ask whether or not it could be looked into to have a pilot study um, a pilot project to actually use the broadcasting facilities in a committee room for the parliament channel um, for some committees to cross-party groups to be able to use that in the future. Clear Baker. Um, I know the member would be disappointed, but it's not possible to facilitate the type of meeting he's suggested. Um, the Code of Conduct does limit the use of facilities, and there are practical issues around limited resources and staff time. 
Um, however, the technology that is being used, uh, Teams, that can include thousands of participants. Um, it is possible to record the meeting for upload at a future uh, point, and I appreciate the member will be disappointed by the response, but he may be persuaded that the alternative I'm proposing would result in the same outcome. But I'd be happy to discuss it uh, with the member. Question number three, Stuart McMillan, who is joining us remotely. Mr McMillan. Thank you, Signing Officer, to ask the Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body what guidance is available to MSPs regarding undertaking party political activity on the parliamentary estate. Maggie Chapman. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I thank Stuart McMillan for his question. As you will be aware, the Code of Conduct for Members requires all members to abide by the Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body's policies. All policies direct that parliamentary resources are provided by the corporate body to support members to carry out their parliamentary duties and must not be used to any significant extent for any other purpose, including party political reasons. Parliamentary resources include office equipment and furniture, IT, mail systems, meeting rooms, as well as expenses paid to support members in carrying out their parliamentary duties, whether met under the ex Members' Expenses Scheme, through financial assistance to non-executive parties, or directly by the corporate body. The corporate body has various policies and guidance in place to advise members about the appropriate activity on, on the parliamentary estate or when making use of parliamentary resource resources. This includes, for example, specific policies and guidance on the use of meeting rooms and photography on the parliamentary estate. The corporate body appreciates that there can sometimes be a fine line between something that is parliamentary and party political, and members must use their judgment accordingly. If there is any doubt, members are encouraged to seek advice from the contact points provided in the appropriate policies before undertaking any such activity. Thank you, Mr. Chapman. And just to reiterate, to, uh, we have eight questions on the business bulletin. If we have answers as long as that to each question, there is absolutely no we will get to number eight. Stuart McMillan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Officer, and I thank Maggie Chapman for the reply. A Scottish Conservatives event for Conservative councillors and Conservative group leaders was held in the Members' Room on the 8th of November. Can the Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body clarify now are political meetings and events allowed to be held on the parliamentary estate? Maggie Chapman. Th thank you, and I thank Stuart McMillan for his supplementary. It would not be appropriate for me to comment about any specific use of the parliamentary estate or resources at this point. If the member has any concerns about any such use of the parliamentary estate, he, he should please follow due process and raise, the, raise a complaint through the appropriate channels in order that that may be looked into and addressed. Question number four, Pam Duncan Glancy. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body whether it will consult MSP staff trade unions before deciding on uprating the staff cost provision in the 2023 24 financial year. Jackson Carlo. I wondered, Deputy Presiding Officer, in the interest of time, if I could refer Ms. Duncan Glancy to the answer I gave in response to Mr. Sweeney's supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Pam Duncan Glancy. I thank the, mem the member for, for that. Um, referral back to a previous answer. Um, I'm sure that I speak for all of us in this chamber when I say that our staff do an outstanding job and I'd like to thank all of them now on the record and particularly my own team. They all too face a cost of living crisis and I in the GMB branch recognises what the member said earlier about the no formal relationship between itself and MSP staff but it is a fact that the staff cost provision allows for annual cost of living increases and it's a basic principle of fair work that trade unions are involved in negotiations. So could the fact could the member and the corporate body find some way to engage in good faith, um, with, uh, who, uh, as they have a key role in this, to engage in good faith with the unions, um, so that the corporate body could um, answer some of the, or they could answer some of the questions that the corporate body itself may have. Jackson Carlo. Uh, I can say that the corporate body has had detailed and robust discussions on all the issues affecting the indices that will be applied when we uprate benefit, uh, uh, the indices that when we uprate. Uh, salaries in the next annual budget. But it is the case that we are not an employer and the scheme is quite clear. It agreed by Parliament places a responsibility on us to uprate the scheme annually using a relevant index as part of the budget setting. And I would repeat that individual MSP employers can of course consult with trade unions and they can agree any cost of living award they wish so long as it is affordable within the overall capped provision. Uh, and in fact, SBCB is aware that many members did indeed make awards which exceeded beyond the inflationary uplift uh, that within the scheme itself. Perhaps I might anticipate uh, a question that's coming later because I think it's relevant that, to Ms Duncan Glancy as well. And that is to say that the corporate body is currently considering 
what financial assistance can be provided to member staff. This includes the sort of one-off non-consolidated payments other employers have made recently, including His Majesty the King. We have had our most recent discussion and constructive discussion today, and we will communicate our intended course of action as soon as possible after these discussions conclude. Question number five, Faisal Chaudhry. <coughs> Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Parliament corporate body if provision can be made for access to the room for contemplation for evening events during recess. Maggie Chapman. The room for contemplation is accessible to building pass holders at all times of the day, including during recess. Visitors wishing to use the room must be accompanied by a pass holder. The corporate, bod corporate body policy is is that should an attendee of an evening member-sponsored event request to use the room for contemplation, an event assistant will support this request and escort the person to and from the room. During recess, member-sponsored events are paused. Faisal Chaudhry. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm grateful for that answer. Uh, when I hosted an event for the faith groups during October recess, attendees were forced to pray in the reception as they were not able to access the room for contemplation. I understand the parliamentary opening hours are uh, curtailed during recess, but as long as members are able to host events uh, that extend uh, outside those hours, surely it makes sense to allow members and their guests access to the rooms for the duration of such an event. Maggie Chapman. I, I thank uh, Faisal Chowdhury for, for that supplementary. For meetings that members have arranged themselves to be held uh, within the Holyrood campus, and it sounds like that, that this meeting that you speak of was one such meeting, um, the member or their representative pass holder is responsible for supporting meeting attendees with access to the room for contemplation. They should be access to the room for contemplation as long as they are accompanied by a pass holder. Question number six, John Mason. To ask the Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body whether MSPs and their staff are putting their rubbish in the correct bins for recycling or otherwise. Christine Graham. Uh, thank you, Deputy President Officer. I'd like to thank John Mason for his rubbish question. Apologies for his question on rubbish. Um, I also like to thank my colleagues for their efforts in segregating materials for recycling. We achieved a recycling rate of 81% in 2021 to 22, which is significantly higher than most public sector bodies. John Mason. Yeah, I do thank Christine Graham for her answer. I think many of us do want to recycle, uh, but uh, there is some confusion. For example, where does paper stop and cardboard begin? Uh, are, are plastic bags able to be recycled with plastic bottles? And holding in my hand here, I have a Tetra Pak bought in the garden uh, in the canteen, and it says it should be recycled, but I don't know where to put it. Uh, before I ask Ms Graham to respond, I would remind members that props are not welcome in the chamber of any kind. Thank you. Ms Graham. I'm trying to find out what the answer to that is. <laughs> we could just fill in time a little bit. All, re all recycling bins, Mr Mason, are uh, colour-coded and include the text and symbols as recommended by Zero Waste Scotland, so you can check on their website. Not-for-profit organi environmental organisation funded by the Scottish Government and European Regional Development Fund. These standard colour symbols and text should be consistent across Scotland, helping individuals, including Mr Mason, to recognise the same bin and waste streams at home, work and out and about. There is also a guide to a recycling bin system on our intranet site and regular communications about waste and recycling, and I'm sure he'll improve. Thank you, Ms Graham. Question number seven, Neil Bibby. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body how it will support any member staff who are dealing with added financial challenges and pressures after the home working allowance payment was discontinued in October. Jackson Carno. Um, at the risk of recycling an answer, can I say that the corporate body is committed to supporting member staff with the cost of living and is actively considering a suite of measures to support staff. The corporate body believes that this is the right thing to do at this very difficult time, recognising that this is an urgent priority for staff. Members are also reminded that they should they require their staff to work from home, they may qualify for tax relief and in such circumstances, members should advise their staff to contact HMRC directly. Neil Bibby. I thank Mr Carlow for that answer and refer to members to my register of interest as a GMB Scotland member. GMB Scotland have highlighted that all member staff, and particularly those working from home, are facing significant additional pressures with increasing energy bills, 
this winter. Staff members have received a blog with advice on saving money, such as uh, changing to LED light bulbs, but they need direct financial help during this cost of living crisis. And I welcome uh, that that is being considered by the parliamentary corporate uh, body. Um, the home working allowance was welcome, but we need to go further. Can I ask that the, any cost of living support payment goes above and beyond the existing uh, home or the previous home working allowance so that it, it can meet the scale of the challenge that people are facing with the cost of living crisis? Jackson Carlow. As I said in response to an earlier question, we are considering this very issue at the moment. We have had constructive discussions over a number of meetings of the corporate body, uh, and I hope that we will be able to communicate soon to members the outcome of those discussions. And in addition to those arrangements, the corporate body is considering other measures uh, which include independent financial advice, financial wellbeing workshops and links to organisations that can provide further advice and support. But the particular item to which Mr Bibby refers should be something we hope will be communicated to members in early course. And question number eight, Martin Whitfield. I'm very grateful, Deputy Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body what steps it's taking to improve safety for MSPs, both within the Parliament and out with the Parliamentary Estate. Clear Baker. Um, thank you. We do take members' personal safety very seriously, and with the advice of our specialist security partners, the corporate body has introduced a range of measures to support members when working both at Parliament and when away from the main estate. And we do keep safety measures under review to ensure they remain proportionate to the risk that members face. Martin Whitford. I'm very grateful to Ms Baker for the, that answer. Recently, um, research or outreach was undertaken by security people to MSPs. Is the Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body satisfied with the response and uptake following that? Clear Baker. Um, there has been quite positive numbers. Uh, 100 members have taken the opportunity for surveys to their constituency or regional office. Um, 38 so far have had home security surveys. Um, do you know sufficient funding? I would assure members that sufficient funding is available for each member should they wish to pursue a security survey. And I would encourage members to apply to the corporate body. And I am grateful to the member for helping us promote the scheme and make sure that members know it is available and that it is fully funded. And brief supplementary, Jamie Green. Uh, thank you. Uh, today was a good example. I sat barely a few feet away from today's protest during FMQs. I'm acutely aware that we need to be an open parliament and allow public access as much as possible. And whilst I appreciate physical security checks are in place for visitors, can I ask what, further pro uh, what more can be done uh, by the parliament to ensure the uh, physical protection of members, especially those sitting at the back, who are particularly vulnerable to protests? Thankfully, in this case, it was just verbal and not physical. Clear Baker. Um, as the member recognised, the, the corporate body is keen of the parliament to remain open and accessible. It is always about achieving the appropriate balance. We always had an incident in Parliament today that we will reflect on, but I thank the member for raising this issue. Point of order, Pam Duncan Glancy. Thank you, President Officer. I forgot to mention that um, on my register of interest, I'm a member of GMB. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Duncan Glancy. That will be noted uh, on the official report. And uh, that concludes uh, Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body Question Time. And there will be a brief pause before we move on to the next item of business to allow front bench teams to change position. Thank you.